ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय I offer my humble obeisance unto the supreme personality of Godhead Vasudev Narayanam namaskrityam naram chaiva narottamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam mudirayet Before reciting Shrimad Bhagavatam which is the very means of conquest one should offer respectful obeisance unto the supreme personality of Godhead Narayana and to Narayan Rishi the supermost human being and to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Shri Vyasadeva, the author of Srimad Bhagavatam. Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttam Ashloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in the classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering service unto the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Guruve Gaur Chandra Ye Radhika Ye Tadalaye Krishna Ye Krishna Bhakta Ye Tad Bhakta Ye Namo Namaha. Shri Prahlad Huvacha Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam Iti Pumsarpita Vishnu Bhaktis Chena Navalakshana Kriyate Bhagavati Adha Tanmanye Dhitam Uttamam Hare Krishna, dear Vishnamas, thank you so much for joining. We are reading Canto 7 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 5, Prahlad Maharaj, the saintly son of Hiraneka Shippu. And we are reading this very, very important verse, text 23 and 24, which has a very elaborate purport referring to the nine limbs of bhakti, or the main processes of bhakti. So we are in the middle of the purport, we discussed about Shravanam yesterday, how Shravanam is so important, how it leads to purification. Hearing is very, very important in Bhakti. And, uh, and everyone, please keep your phones on mute when you're not speaking, so we can hear properly. That's also actually, you know, part of the hearing. <laughs> So, now let's move to Kirtanam, and I think Umesh Prabhu had some questions yesterday, but we will discuss that towards the end. Let's first absorb in hearing uh, from the lips of a pure devotee, that is Srila Prabhupada, who is pouring his transcendental ecstasy in the form of his elaborate purports for all of us. So, I'm reading the section, Kirtanam, in the purport. The hearing of the holy name has been described above. Now let us try to understand the chanting of the holy name, which is the second item in the consecutive order. It is recommended that such chanting be performed, performed very loudly. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Narad Muni says that without shame, he began traveling all over the world, chanting the holy name of the Lord. Similarly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has advised Trinad api so niche na taror api sahishnuna Amani na manadena kirtaniya sadahari. A devotee can very peacefully chant the holy name of the Lord by behaving more humbly than the grass, being tolerant like a tree, and offering respect, respects to everyone without expecting honor from anyone else. Such qualifications make it easier to chant the holy name of the Lord. The process of transcendental chanting can be easily performed by anyone, even if one is physically unfit, classified lower than others, devoid of material qualifications, or not at all elevated in terms of pious activities. The chanting of the holy name is beneficial. An aristocratic birth, an elevated and advanced education, beautiful body, features, wealth and similar results of pious activities are all unnecessary for advancement in spiritual life. One can 
very easily advance simply by chanting the holy name. It is understood from the authoritative source of Vedic literature that especially in this age, Kali Yuga, people are generally short-living, extremely bad in their habits, and inclined to accept methods of devotional service that are not bona fide. Moreover, they are always disturbed by material Tala conditions. Taladukan talks. Hare Krishna. Hmm. Under the circumstances, the performance of other processes such as yajna, dana, tapa, and kriya, sacrifices, charity, and so on are not at all possible. Therefore, it is recommended Harir Nama Harir Nama Harir Nama Eva Kevalam Kalau Vanaste 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 Gatir Anyatha. In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only means of delivering is chanting the holy name of the Lord. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. So I'll stop here. So, yesterday we discussed about Shravanam, the important process of hearing. Now, this is about chanting. Kirtanam, to sing the glories of Krishna. And, and Prabhupada is mentioning that one must not feel ashamed. Sometimes we do street sankirtan or, you know, chanting in a public place. We should not have this uh, inhibition. Oh, what if my colleague sees me? He also comes to Patel Brothers. I am also at Patel Brothers. I am doing kirtan here. Uh, what will happen and things like that. Not a very great thing. But, so, one should be, in fact, have that, that we are trying to share the best thing. And what could be a better thing than sharing the holy name? But in what state one should uh, do this? Trinada Pisuni Chena. If we expect honor or any kind of material selfish agendas, Oh, chanting will give me this, chanting will give me that, or I'll become a senior devotee, or oh, people will glorify me, or oh, I'll also be called a devotee and this and that. Any kind of, without expecting any honor, amanina, manadina, um, that will make the chanting very easy, very, very important. In that state, one can chant all the time. So, there is no material kind of, you know, only rich people can chant, only uh, males can chant. In the Vedic mantras, there were some conditions, only this sector of people can do this, only, you know, women cannot do this, you know, Shudras cannot do this. But in Kali Yuga, people, the condition is very pathetic. Everyone is Shudra. Kale Sambhavati, Shudra. That everyone is born, actually, in a Shudra. And then that's what we see is happening, everyone. So the point is, so this holy name is the medicine of this age. There is only one medicine, no other way, no other way, no other way. So why is it repeated three times? Because there is really no other way. The point is to have that faith. The point is to have that conviction. Uh, because often when we do something repeatedly, we may not value it as much um, or or. Know, keep it or may tend to take it for granted. Therefore, it is very important to hear the importance, the glories of chanting holy name. And that's what Shri Prabhupada is sharing here. So hearing will lead to better kirtan. Better kirtan will lead to better hearing. So it's like all these uh, processes are not independent. They help each other. They nourish each other. Therefore, Shri Prabhupada has given us this nice program that you chant minimum 16 rounds, you hear Bhagavatam, you do Deity worship, you do Tulsi Arti, Nourishing Arti, Guru Puja, and do service, book distribution, prasad distribution. All this is basically Navda Bhakti actually. So very nicely Prabhupada has given us this package so that we can you know, do this Navda Bhakti and purify ourselves. Okay, let's continue reading. Um, would someone like to read next one or two paragraphs? Yes, 
ಕೃಷ್ಣಿಂಗ್ therefore even if one is able to perform other processes of devotional service one must adopt the chanting of the holy name as the principal method of advancing in spiritual life yagya sankirtana prayer yajanti hi sumedasa those who are very sharp in their intelligence should adopt this process of chanting the holy names of the lord one should not however manufacture different types of chanting one should adhere seriously to the chanting of the holy name as recommended in the scriptures hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare while chanting the holy name of the lord one should be careful to avoid 10 offenses from sanat kumara it is understood that even if a person is a severe offender in many ways he is freed from offensive life if he takes shelter of the lord's holy name indeed even if a human being is no better than a two legged animal he will be liberated if he takes shelter of the holy name of the lord one should therefore not be very careful not to commit offenses at the lotus feet of the lord's holy name the offenses are described as follows to blaspheme a devotee especially a devotee engaged in broadcasting the glories of the holy name to consider the name of lord shiva or any other demigod to be equally or as powerful as the holy name of the supreme personality of godhead no one is equal to the supreme personality godhead nor is any one superior to him to disobey the instructions of the spiritual master c to blaspheme the vedic literatures and literatures in compiled in persians of the vedic literatures e to comment that the glories of the holy name of the lord are exaggerated s to interpret the holy name in a deviant way g to commit sinful activities on the strength of ch- chanting the holy name k to compare the chanting of the holy name to pious activities i to inflict the glories of holy name of the holy name to a person who has no understanding of the chanting of the holy name j not to awaken in transcendental attachment of for the chanting of the holy name even after hearing all the scripture injunctions hare krishna so we we begin this with um, uh, this uh, kirtanam with uh, knowing that narad muni started chanting or uh, uh, doing kirtan all over the three worlds without shame loudly so narad muni is doing it for uh, uh, many trillion years now, at least couple of trillion years now and it is so beautifully as it stopped and he keeps on glorifying and propa said uh, one time propa was uh, doing kirtan in and Uh, the devotee said oh prabhupad we are sorry nobody came for this we really took your time and energy but not many people came it was the hall was very lightly filled so prabhupad said no didn't you see narad muni came so narad muni goes anywhere there is a kirtanam happening and chanting is uh, happening nicely also lord chaitanya when he was walking um nitananda prabhu insisted please take a servant because you would be chanting on your beat so that servant can carry uh, your paraphernalia so the chanting is so important that even lord chaitanya does it and narad muni is doing non stop there is no break uh, haridas thakur is doing it this is uh, propas is then this is the best process for success in life in other ages you know there could be other processes but this is for the kali yuga this is the most potent weapon for kali yuga to uh, uh, to counter attack the ma- attack of maya and the one one to advance this is the best process one could be doing all other processes but this is the best process to advance in spiritual life and where we stand we really need this advancement this is like a we are caught in the desert and we need this like a des- anybody in desert would need water it's um, yeah. then prep then prabhupada reminds us that one should seriously adhere to chanting of the holy, holy names like hari krishna someone asked prabhupada prabhupada i'm doing kirtan in the temple all the time so is it uh, is it okay if i skip your rounds prabhupada said no you can you may be doing kirtan but it's really important to chant your rounds and then prabhupada reminds us here to avoid 10 offenses 
And uh, so whenever there is do's, there are also don'ts. When when you look at the manual, you know, the, uh, to maintain a car, you will see do's and you will see don'ts. When you, everything comes with, it has a, everything is like a coin. It has two sides. So the second side, is, if you want to chant purely, if you want to chant nicely, then this is this is something must. Um, this way, this is the way to nourish our mind so that our mind can really concentrate on the holy name. So first is to blaspheme a devotee. Um, what hap uh, devotee represents a lot of in lot of purpose we have read this. A devotee is actually representative of Krishna. So the way we we are treating devotees, we are t uh, t treating Krishna. So if we blaspheme devotee, we are actually indirectly blaspheming the Lord. And so how can the mercy flow through holy name? Second is to consider names of dev demigod equal to Krishna. So it, this this is a very convoluted misunderstanding. We have also learned many times that demigod worship is indirect worship of Krishna. And most important point here is to remember always that all the demigods are completely dependent on Krishna. Uh, and there nobody is independent of Krishna. He is the cause of all causes. And the rest of the demigods, even uh, Vishnu, is expansions. So Krishna appears. Krishna is the... Um, the main source and everything is coming from him. So third is to disobey the instructions of spiritual master. Um, th th this is one of the very important things to remember because how we, de how we deal in everyday life, the many times we can see how our spiritual master is dealing with things. And the instructions, uh, the instruction he usually gives us, he gives us after observing or many times it is after um, the instructions can co even come in the class. And it's um, when we obey the spiritual master, the mercy flows. Uh, a gu a serving guru is the first step in serving Krishna. We cannot serve Krishna directly. So only by obeying guru, uh, we can proceed on this path. Uh, to blaspheme the Vedic literature uh, in per uh, and literatures compiled in Persians of the Vedic literature. So we know all the conclusion of Vedas is to know Krishna. So Vedesh, uh, uh, that verse is there, Vedesh, uh, sorry. So of all the, uh, the purpose of all the Vedas is to know Krishna. So if we blaspheme the, any Vedic literature, that's an offense. We, uh, we were just reading in a couple of, uh, three, four chapters ago, that this is, Prabhupada said, this is itihasa. This is a fact, Kulinga birds pass time. Um, so the, how can birds talk or stuff? No, this is itihasa, Prabhupada says. And Prabhupada also said in that pur uh, that purport that if anybody does not believe this, he is a Mayavadi. So if we have to believe it in 100%, Prabhupada said, you know, if I if I'm saying something, it has to be true. Um, you know, do you think I would cheat? Prabhupada was giving us 100% pure knowledge. And he, ne he is not the kind of person he would cheat. None of the other um, great, great Acharyas and the Vyasadev, they wouldn't want us to cheat. So if the Vedic literature is present, it's 100% pure and real. So to blaspheme Vedic literature is again like blaspheming Krishna or the author, which is a devotee. And then to comment that the glories of the holy name of the Lord are exaggerated, you know, we may, with our such a limited understanding, we may think that, oh, how can in one, if I, even if I utter the Krishna's holy name once, how can all the sins I have committed for so many lifetimes are vanquished? And then how come I'm not liberated as soon as I chant Hare Krishna? So it's, a, it's all mind trickery. If we, we, uh, we are really trying to glorify Krishna's name, then these thoughts won't come to our mind. You know, the mind will start to become a little more humble and a little more understanding who is Krishna, who is the Supreme Lord, and how he has invested all his potencies in his, his holy name. But not to challenge someone. This is the root cause of jealousy or envy. So the next offense is to, and I'm sure Shubhala's point of will uh, uh, go in a much deeper way. This purpose is so important. Uh, and the next is to interpret the holy name in a deviant way. I'll skip this one. To commit sinful activities on the strength of namad uh, yad balasya papabuddhi. So this 
So how uh, once we start chanting, we think, oh, you know, I can I can do the small thing um, here, and I can cheat there, or I can pickpocket somewhere, or I can, oh, you know what? Um, I'm sure Krishna will take care of it, or I'm sure he will understand. But this is this mentality is uh, papa buddhi. So anytime we may come, we may not once we are on unattended, like us, we are driving and it, we are unattentive, you know, we will will get off the track. So the similarly, if we are, if our mind goes towards cheating, then it will be very difficult to get it off, uh, get it back on the track. And uh, this tendency, this pride comes once we are chanting nicely. So it's very, very important to watch it, watch it out and curb that pride because um, otherwise it just poisons the whole garden. The next is to compare the chanting of holy name to pious activities. Now chanting of holy name is absolutely uh, topmost on this part platform. It's not like going and taking bath in the Ganges or doing some pious activities, feeding someone or doing some... Um, th th this is absolutely not the case. It's like pure gold, pure diamond, you know, and non. So you cannot compare a pure, uh, something pure diamond, Prabhupada said, to a broken piece of glass. So compared to that, because pi pious activities will, and also we read that, uh, you know, in the sixth canto, we may do some sin and we, we may do some atonement, but that's, that will only take us back into the circle. So sometimes pious activities are also done to, for atonement. Next is to instruct the glories of the holy name to somebody who does not understand. Now, why this could be offense? Because A, we could be wasting our time. We could give that time to somebody else who may be really right. And B, sometimes if a neophyte does this, it, is, uh, it starts to shake down his own faith. So the, and probably there are more reasons. But these two are principles. And the last is not to awaken transcendental attachment for chanting of the holy name, even after hearing all these scriptural injunctions. So this is a very nice pastime. Uh, a lot, a uh, lot of people were going for a wedding, and they they slept. It was a long journey, so they slept. And then on morning they woke up. They were at the same spot because the ship was anchored. The boatman forgot to take out the anchor. So this is the same analogy. If we if we remain attached to some material things, then it is extremely difficult to row against this flow of the material energy and go back to Godhead because our ship will remain anchored. But as soon as we let that anchor, uh, attachment go, as soon as we try our best, uh, watch out for offenses, uh, have faith in Guru and Krishna, follow his instructions, and understand this is the absolute devotional service. Chanting is uh, the best. Then our Then the whole material world becomes like a print of a cow, this uh, Bhavasagar, this whole ocean becomes like a cow's hoof print and then we can cross over easily. Back to you Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much for so nicely and in a detailed way explaining these points. Okay, let's complete the Kirtanam section and then we can take some other reflections or questions. Would someone like to read the Remainder of Kirtanam. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Tannavat Pranam to everyone. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. There is no way to atone for any of these offenses. It is therefore recommended that one, that an offender at the feet of the holy name continue to chant the holy name 24 hours a day. Constant chanting of the holy name will make one free for of offenses and then he will gradually be elevated to the transcendental platform on which he can chant the pure holy name and thus become a lover of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is recommended that even if one commits offenses, one should continue chanting the holy name. In other words, the chanting of the holy name makes one offenseless. In the book Nama Komodi, it is recommended that if one is an offender at the lotus feet of a Vaishnava, he should submit to that Vaishnava and be executed. Similarly, if one is an offender in chanting the holy name, he should submit to the holy name and thus be freed from his offenses. 
In this connection, there is the following statement spoken by Daksha to Lord Shiva. I did not know the glories of your personality and therefore I committed an offense at your lotus feet in the open assembly. You are so kind, however, that you did not accept my offense. Instead, when I was falling down because of accusing you, you saved me by your merciful glance. You are most great, kindly, you are most great, kindly excuse me and be satisfied with your own exalted qualities. One should be very humble and meek to offer one's desires and chant prayers composed in glorification of the holy name, such as Ai Mukta Kuler Upasya Manam and Nivratya Tarsar Upagya Manat. One should chant such prayers to become free from offenses at the lotus feet of the holy name. A very nice uh, purport. So Prabhupada here is telling that what Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya started this Hare Krishna movement of chanting the holy name of Lord, Krish, uh, Lord Krishna and by that chanting the holy name we will be gradually freed from all material opulences and um, Paridash Thakur um, uh, he used to chant 24 hours a day uh, from uh, uh, Gauranga's pastime we know that and here uh, Prabhupada is giving us very very um, simple instructions like at least to chant 16 rounds a day and sometimes the chanting of the holy name is sometimes challenging with those or uh, different material obstruction, obstructions uh, come so we will overcome gradually by chanting steadily the holy name and when we will chant um, we will have to keep in mind that we will not do any offenses um, and putting our mind uh, towards then only the holy name, not thinking about other material stuff. And it will come gradually with uh, Guru's mar mercy and Krishna's uh, mercy. And uh, here, uh, the, here uh, like this uh, Daksha uh, says to Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva is the uh, your very pure devotee of Lord Krishna. And um, that's why he is so humble. And um, that's why he forgave Daksha when Daksha was not giving him respect. Uh, so that's what the uh, last paragraph of Kirtanam section says. Uh, have to be one, have to be a devotee who is chanting the holy name, have to be very humble um, and meek um, uh, when they are chanting the holy name. And um, that way we will able to purify ourselves. Uh, back to you Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Mataji. So, chanting is the Yoga Dharma. Chanting is 99% of our spiritual life, depends on how we chant. This is the core. Without chanting, there is no other way. So much glorification about chanting. And Personally, um, this is the area I, I struggle the most actually. I'm just honestly speaking my vulnerability um, that I am not the right person to even talk about chanting because I'm struggling so much. Um, but the idea is are we sincerely trying? And the root of all offenses is inattentive chanting. And as I mentioned before, because sometimes in the story of the diamond, you all have heard that story that, um, you know, a, a, somehow or the other a washerman got this, this diamond stone and he used, started to use it. He didn't know what is this diamond. He said, okay, I'll use it to wash clothes, to rub clothes, to take off the dirt. Then some students, some people, the young kids got it and they used it to play, you know, kids play with stones and stuff. They were using it to, to, to play some silly games. Then a vegetable vendor got it and he said, okay, maybe it's like two pounds. I can use it to balance, you know, two pounds of vegetables and give it to my customers. But only a person who knows the glories of the diamond, that is the 
um, the, the what do you call that uh, jewel the jewelry owner or that the diamond merchant yeah he could he could understand so he asked the um, the dhobi the washerman hey um, and after the washerman was done with washing his clothes and he put it uh, in, on his donkey he had a donkey to carry clothes he put in like a garland not like a pendant in the uh, the diamond was hanging like a pendant because for washerman it was just a stone and the diamond merchant happened to you know pass by and he could understand what is the value and he said hey um there's a nice stone in your in your donkey's um neck um are you planning to sell it or something or do you really need it i'm looking for such stone he didn't say how precious it was and the for the the washerman it was not of much value maybe 5 10 rupees that's all he was valuing it and he said yeah i can give it to you it's not a big deal and the the diamond merchant said would 200 rupees be okay for this and the the washerman was awestruck he was expecting like 5 rupees 10 rupees at max but when the diamond merchant said 200 rupees at that very point actually the diamond broke into pieces it was an extraordinary diamond worth millions of rupees or dollars so then the diamond you know personified spoke well why did you you know and the the diamond merchant is asking a question why did you break into pieces he said it's okay if the boys didn't understand my value they were playing with me it's okay if the the vegetable vendor didn't understand my value it's okay if the this washerman didn't understand my value but you have heard you know how precious i am but you didn't value me so i am i didn't like that fact so ordinary people may not understand who are, who are not into krishna consciousness etc but when devotees take it cheaply then holy name is not very happy devotees you know there are multiple ways we can improve our chanting and the most important the essence is to be very attentive because it is like a talk with krishna that means if i'm talking to the most important person in my life then i should keep my phone down i should not do multitasking or if if that's so important to me that means i should give it priority in my life so keep my cell phone away during the japa the world will not drown we are not so much you know like if i don't answer that message you know, right away what will happen nothing will happen nothing will happen 99.999 one in million situations could be okay something is really urgent but one it's one in million maybe one in billion the world will not drown his grace vishaka prabhu says unless the world is on fire don't disturb me during japa <laughs> so and pr- proper pronunciation so kirtanam includes japa and which is um, individual and kirtanam also includes the congregational chanting with some musical instruments etc kirtanam actually also includes bhagavatam katha because kirtan is bhagavat is what we are glorifying krishna's name form qualities naam kirtan roop kirtan lila kirtan but amongst those naam kirtan has the most value or is most important so listening very very attentively and uh, not being lazy remember death is coming like recently two very very famous bollywood actors died one was about 50 one was about 65 lot of name fame wealth the end so many uh, you know every day kamala dala jala jeevan thala mala it could happen with anyone and you know and certainly one day will be everyone's last day so remembering that what is the importance what we have received 
Shri Rupa Goswami says, when I speak the word Krishna, I do not know how much nectar these two syllables have. That I want thousands and millions of tongues and thousands and millions of ears to hear it. So during Kirtanam also we are hearing. During Bhagavatam, which is Shravanam, core, but we are doing Kirtan also because we are talking about Krishna's name, form, quality. And one very, very important mood, chanting is basically like a cry, as Prabhupada said. A baby cries for the mother. So, with all of our attention, Krishna, I really want to be with you, Krishna. I have a lot of shortcomings, Krishna. Please help me. Somehow or the other, I'm so attracted to material things. I have no taste, but I will sincerely try to please my Gurudev, to please Shri Prabhupada. Because one day I hope, if I continue to struggle like this, one day you will choose to help me. I cannot uh, get that taste on my own, but please help me. In that prayerful mood, that Trinada Pisuni Chena mood, um, Krishna, please. And when we are touching the bead, it is like the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya. So proper posture, proper um, you know, position, and pace, you should not be too fast, should not be too slow. Um, uh, it, so, and the morning time is the best time. And sometimes we should read also the glories of the holy name because the mind is such that, okay, today we are hearing this, the importance of holy name. After five days, mind will, you know, trick us. And we'll, and me, again, I'm talking about myself. I may again go back. So we need to constantly hear about the importance of the holy name, how important it is. It is the core of bhakti. It is the, it shows how attached we are to Krishna. It is very, very important. We cannot overemphasize the importance of holy name. Again, I'm just theoretically speaking and I pray to all the Vaishnavas to, to pray for us, for each other, so that we can develop taste for chanting the holy name. That is the essence of life, Namaruchi, Jivedaya, Namaruchi, and without offense. Any other comments on this section? It's a very big topic, we can talk a lot, but um, any quick comments or reflections or questions on Kirtanam? I, I have one question. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Item J. Uh, there's an observation in transcendental attachment for a chanting of the holy name even after hearing all these scriptural injunctions. Can you explain that? I'm just a little confused there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Madhra Prabhu, you want to share something? Okay, Prabir Prabhu will speak on this maybe. You want to speak Prabhu? Anyone would like? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Sorry, yes, I only hear. Okay. Who is really inspired to speak on this J point? Anyone? Prabhuji, I'm not qualified, uh, so if I understand the question, uh, Prabhuji is uh, asking, even after hearing a lot of, like, it's one of the ten offenses, right, Prabhuji? Is yes, that, uh, did I understand mm -hmm. the question? Correct. Yes, yes, he yeah, wants to understand uh, what is this. Yeah, go ahead, Raghu Prabhu, you yeah, have, wanted to I, clarify. Yeah, <clears throat> I wanted clarification of that. Uh, J, where it says not to awaken in transcendental attachment for the chanting of the holy name, even after hearing all these scriptural injunctions. Is it, is it saying that after hearing all this and chanting all this, we should be waking up in transcendental attachment or, you know, I, maybe it's a double negative, I'm not following it. So, yes, Prabhuji, that's what I understood. So, you know, we have to awaken our and, you know, even after all hearing this, if we are still attached to the material nature, you know, there is not much, uh, uh, you know, improvement. And also, uh, we have to, as Prabhuji was mentioning, 
we have to cry for the lord we have to you know do our chanting nicely because prabhu also said you know that is the main thing so it's that is the reason it says that not awake and transcendental attachment for the chanting of the holy name even after so that's what i understand prabhu so it's kind of a double negative uh, that's my understanding thank you prabhu thank you thank you prabhu are krishna prabhu can yes. i share yes please so i'm going to share my personal experience so as uh, prabhu prabhu was saying uh, that sometimes we read and then we associate with the bodies then our chanting gets better and i have very strong attraction for cricket match so i found that after i chant a uh, few days uh, i i lost that attraction but then i uh, bangladesh was playing and then i i got again attracted i i i kind of like uh, started uh, looking at the news or looking at the uh, apps uh, and i saw that my attraction to the uh, chanting of the holy name uh, went down and sometimes it happened like i i i i tried my best to chant minimum 8 to 10 rounds before uh, early in the morning before my and i found that i couldn't do that so i was thinking that where is my fault because i didn't uh, knowingly any do any vishnu bapara i didn't say any hard words harsh words to anybody then i realized that that is the main one of my fault that i got attracted in spite of chanting in spite of listening to the bhagavatam class in spite of knowing that my this condition is because of my self and i want to enjoy that is envy and i am doing that enviousness so again i tried my i paid to uh, try and, and again i am i am asking all of your blessings so that i don't get into uh and i i will tell you i get that every few days uh, i it's, it's like i associate with the different maharaj when they come to alachua and then again i get into this kind of situation so i can i can tell you that this is the often said attachment to krishna we we cannot do actually detachment from anything we cannot we don't have the ability mind is so strong mind is stronger strong it's like an elephant uh, in compared to an uh, uh, to uh, me it's like an uh, insect and mind is like an elephant can take anywhere but again uh, just taking uh, shelter of and not to uh, get into this kind of trap and like to not to i, I can say for myself that that was i, I was really thinking that how and then when i came out of that i i am not following then i can see that gradually i can again i can follow the rules i mean i can chant my rounds early in the morning so i can sh- just want to share that but please do please bless me hari krishna you are sincere bro so as we are moving in our spiritual journey we should introspect again attachment to krishna is no joke and detachment from matter is also not easy but let's introspect let's analyze am i is my attachment to krishna growing in is my attachment to material things growing which direction am i making progress if i am making progress in the right direction that means my desire to you know watch mundane movies or sports is reducing it it won't stop overnight as prabhu ji is mentioning it's a process it takes time or you know go to you know some karmi restaurants and then which are not conducive for bhakti or or have habits which are not conducive for bhakti um is my attachment there increasing or decreasing and on the positive note is my attachment to do more service to read more bhagavatam to chant more to to you know offer more to krishna is is that increasing or reducing so if the answer is it is on a positive note 
and we may not be able to you know analyze every day but let's we should certainly take out some time maybe every in march me maybe every quarter like a company has a you know, quarterly reports financial reports they analyze right why do they analyze they want to so that if they are going off track let's do some steps so that we don't continue to go off track same as our gps if we go off track there is a, some feedback mechanism and you know it's all inbuilt and the gps tells okay you took a bad turn you you made a wrong turn but now you do this so that you can come on track again so it reroutes so similarly we should also introspect what in which direction is my attachment growing is it towards krishna and in things in relation to krishna like chanting reading hearing prasadam distribution book distribution any services towards guru towards prabhupad towards vaishnavas if it is not happening um then it's an offense actually and it could be a result of other offenses also and so because you're spending so much time and energy we want to get some result right <laughs> and the result is krishna prema but if the opposite is happening if you're getting more dear uh, to maya prema more attachment towards lust anger then we're doing something wrong and let's introspect what is going wrong let's discuss with senior vaishnavas with our teachers Does that make sense, Ru? Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Um, hi, Krishna. This is Ravanandas. Uh, can I add something? Yeah. Please. Thank you for uh, thank you for the nice discussion and nice explanation. Because I was just keeping quiet because I did not feel qualified to speak on this subject because I make all these mistakes and offenses a lot. And one thing that struck me, especially when while the discussion was going on about point J, inattentiveness is the root cause of all these other offenses. And uh, the more attentive I am to chanting. the easier it is for me to let go of the uh, material attachments and conversely more inattentive i am more attached to material things i am so each one of us would have experienced both the sides of this coin like attentive chanting at some times and inattentive chanting at other times so um one instruction that i heard was very uh inspiring and i'm trying to practice that um where intention goes attention goes and where attention goes energy flows so if i am contemplating um something on the material level we all have read and heard from shrimad bhagavatam that contemplation of senses on sense objects leads to material attachments and if uh, my my intention is for me to use some of these stuff for my own enjoyment and i am just thinking about that the intention is that and the attention is going there and my energy is going automatically there and that is why in one sense inattention to child the spiritual stuff and that inattention towards krishna so if i am even though i might have these um materialistic desires to just enjoy to watch sports or movies or something like that or listen to some music at least when i am sitting down to chant let me pray sincerely and have that intention okay this this chanting time whatever it might be it might be 15 minutes 30 minutes or i do the full 2 hour stretch of 16 rounds let me get the spiritual strength from krishna so that i can 
stay focused at least during that chanting time because that attentiveness in my chanting is going to help me a lot in overcoming my material attachments otherwise i am going deeper and deeper into that attachment thing and also we might have heard uh, this example because when we are watering the lawn the weeds also get watered and it grows up so it's like an attentive gardener will want to also notice whether the weeds are growing and then take care of removing the weeds and the grass is growing fine so attention again so as a chant uh, as a person who is trying to chant hari krishna maha mantra i have to be like the attentive gardener if i am like the attentive gardener then my attachment towards krishna is growing if i am an inattentive gardener i am lazy slacking and complacent then more weeds are growing but i am continuing to chant i am continuing to water and both are growing grass is growing weed is growing and i am continuing to chant but my material attachments is going so inattentive chanting is directly related to my material attachments growing so my my focus is now more on how i can bring myself to do attentive chanting and that spills over into the rest of my spiritual practices and to the rest of my life too so that i i was just thinking about that and i have a long way to go in uh, being very attentive but hope that helps Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhu. It was really helpful. Mr. Anandan Prabhu, what's the next point? Okay. Anyone else has any other comments or questions about this topic? This is the core topic, actually. Um, and I, uh, we can discuss this for like two hours. Um, but still, let's not move forward. We have a few minutes. So, it's talking about inattentiveness. Inattentiveness is on three levels, actually. Number one, and it's going from gross to subtle. Inattentive on the level of body. Inattentive on the level of mind. And inattentive on the level of heart. Can anyone give the examples of bodily inattentiveness? Okay. sleeping sleeping and chanting okay or cooking chanting opening or browsing sorry say can through uh browsing phone while chanting yes especially these days browsing phone or whatsapping or facebooking or or you know checking other emails and well just check this one thing when this internet this is web web of maya is like catches us and from gmail to facebook to whatsapp to to you know linkedin to what not it will just carry us so at least bodily we say i'll and then we have to you know tell the mind oh my mind i will do i will take care of the phone but i will chant whatever rounds we we promise our mind to chant like hardas thakur said to that uh, you know the prostitute so basically the, all these distractions are like prostitute who are trying to distract us from krishna so we tell i will take care of you but let me do my quota at our quota is four rounds or eight rounds or six rounds whatever we have decided okay i will do eight rounds then i will take care of you and then the schedule should be such that we are always busy oh after eight rounds i have to make breakfast for the my family there is no time okay okay my dear phone i will take care of you when i am done with my breakfast or offering to krishna so let's that's how we should keep busy i'm not saying that we there are times we have to see the phone and do the needful etc but the more planned we make the the better our lifestyle will get so it is not that we are doing multi billion dollar business and we need to address that 
you know, call or phone right away. Otherwise, you know, the world will be on fire. It's nothing like that. Even if we don't reply for a couple of hours or maybe one or two days, nothing will happen. Trust me, try it. And if you really want to try it, don't touch your phone for two days, except for joining Bhagavatam calls. Hmm. Nothing big will happen. Our mind will say, this will happen, that will happen, how will that be done, how will this be done, nothing will happen. Um, so, so number one, bodily inattentiveness, not multitasking. If you're chanting, it's always Bhakti Rasamrit Swami Maharaj says, one of the definitions of spirituality, when it's time to chant, chant. When it's time to go to work, go to work. When it's time to eat, eat. When it's time to sleep, sleep. But the problem is when we are sleeping, we are chanting and we are chanting, we are doing work and we are cooking and we are talking and this and that and so it's messed up. So being in the present, being in the what we are doing, uh, that giving full attention. If Krishna is there, let's say an important person comes and will say, okay, let me you know, take care of the kitchen work and I'll be back. Okay, let me take care of my phone and call came and let me take care of my this and that. So plan your schedule so that you can give exclusive time, attentive time on the bodily level. Any examples of inattentiveness on the level of mind? Then now we are going more subtle. Bodily inattentiveness, easy to control. Let's talk about mental inattentiveness. Thinking about others, thinking about other work related. Thinking about other work, office, okay, what else? Planning. Planning. Creative ideas come. Yeah, creative ideas, to-do list, office, save ideas. Mm. What else? Anything else? Oh, and she even said this it, to me. Sorry, Prabhu, go ahead. Even it comes to like, even it might be something to even to do with our uh, services. Are related to the temple or, uh, or to a devotee group or something like that. So the creative juices flow like anything when it comes into contact with the holy names. And then we start prioritizing, oh, I have to do this, I can get it done this way, I have to do this, I have to, oh, I, I'm, I'm doing all this for only Krishna, so it's fine. So mind tricks like that and then takes takes my attention away from the holy name because at this time when I am sitting down to chant it's about holy name but I, I, some kind of a rationalization or justification is provided by the mind itself and mind easily yanks me out of that space and I am somewhere else now. Thank you Prabhu for sharing our situation or my situation sorry. So yes absolutely so many things, office work, ideas, I will do this, sometimes fault finding, oh she said this to me, oh he said this to me, oh next time if he meets me, uh, next time, all this stuff, um, you know, chanchalam hi mana krishna, man is very chanchala, like a monkey, so we, how to tame this monkey mind, bring it back, bring it back, that's the, what the acharyas say, the teachers say, bring it back, wherever the mind wanders, bring it back, don't worry, we're all struggling. It will still go. We bring it back. So therefore, you know, um, maybe you can put Prabhupada's Japa along, try to hear along. Um, maybe you sit in front of DTs. Maybe we can sit in front of Tulasi Devi. All these things help. Uh, maybe after like four rounds, we hear again the importance of chanting uh, or something like that or after eight rounds or so that we are trying to bring our mind back. As I said, bodily inattentiveness, relatively easier to handle. It's also difficult, but we are going from difficult to uh, more difficult. Then most difficult is heart. Inattentiveness on the level of heart. Any examples? Um, uh, I, I want to do it is a good intention or a good way of positioning the heart but I have to do it so basically I put a uh, restriction on myself that it's something like an imposition so my heart is not there I feel like I just 
I have to do it because I have committed to it. It's it's a duty. So that 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 that's not what Krishna is looking for. So, but if I say I want to do it, I like to do it, I love to do it. So that is putting heart into it. And the otherwise, it's it's just a mechanical thing. Oh, I'll just get it done, and then I can do go about and doing the rest of my day's activities because that burden is off my shoulders. Oh my God! Only tomorrow I have to worry about again sitting down and chanting sixteen rounds. So that that's the different. I have to do it. I want to do it. So maybe uh, my struggle is from going from I have to do it to I want to do it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ru. And one so, thing is priority. Priority. Mm-hmm. That we should prioritize our chanting. Very nice point. Because what is important, we will invest our more of our time and energy. So, and therefore, it is said to chant in the early morning hours. That is the best. And I think we all have this experience. When we chant our rounds nicely in the morning, the whole day is so smooth and happy. When our rounds are pending in the evening or late night, it just feels a burden and a drag. And the whole day is, we feel, what did I do today? I mean, I had so much of those days. So, so we all have experienced it, I believe. Pratyakshava bhakti can be experienced. So attentiveness on the level of heart is most difficult, but again, reminding about the glories in a prayerful mood, Krishna, I really need you. Self-affirmations is, um, this Mahatma Prabhu has a small book, Japa Affirmations, as I, I want to do this, I have to do this, etc. Uh, you know, I want to purify myself. It will please Krishna, it will please Gurudev. So having, giving those, uh, you know, it is said that the conscious mind is only 10%. The subconscious mind is much bigger. So we keep bombarding positivity and importance of chanting to our subconscious mind so that our heart can be more connected to Krishna, to the holy name, so that we can try to cry out. Remembering how, uh, you know, imagining this, you know, like sometimes like Kunti Maharani, such a difficult situation. In difficulty, we all you know, cry out nicely. But when things are going a little smooth, then we are not able to cry out. So, you know, really in the mood of a beggar, mood of a prayer, mood of a child, I'm lost. I think I'm enjoying in this family and home and job and this and that. But Krishna, look at my, you know, my menial situation. Please help me. I want to be connected to you. You are my true friend, but somehow I'm lost. Please help me. Please reveal yourself to me. I'm trying. I'm still very far. Please help me. So that is a prayerful mood. And that links to Vandanam. See? That's how everything is linked. Vandanam means prayer. Any other comments or questions before we stop for today? So Prabhuji, we can, you know, you said subconscious mind. So how we, I mean, conscious mind, we can, you know, tell. But how we tell to the subconscious mind? By repeating these thoughts, like Japa affirmations, reading about the importance. If things which are taking us away, uh, you know, it is like, it is that mind can make heaven out of hell and hell out of heaven. Uh, but if we are keeping the good association, keeping the good vibrations, then it, those vibrations are going in. So, like, what are we feeding? So, it basically association, hearing, etc. Are, are enriching that. Does it help? Okay, Prabhu. So, I thought all this is coming into conscious mind because we are telling consciously. Okay, I think if, uh, by default, slowly... It will yes, work. it's going in both, actually. It's going... Okay. I, I certainly feel it's going in both sides. And sometimes uh, we may forget something now, but you may not even you know, recall that something happened like 10 years back and out of the blues it will come because that's the next topic, Smaranam. Krishna says, I am the one who gives Smaranam. Right? Thank you, Prabhupada.
Okay. Okay, thank you so much to all the Vaishnavas. So let's really pray to cry for Krishna. Let's pray for each other so that you know prayers of Vaishnavas like all of you really work. So please pray um, for ourselves, for our dear ones, for this all the devotees present so that we can really um, not do any offenses on the level of body, mind or heart and with faith, with attention with humility, without any other agendas, call out for Krishna. Very simple, but very difficult. <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining. Grantraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai, Shri La Prabhupada Maharaj Ki Jai, Sarveti Gautamda Ki Jai. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.